So we've gone ahead and have drawn a picture of the described scenario. We have a hand being slammed downward. Notice that we've called the initial velocity negative 13 meters per second because we are assuming the downward direction is negative. And then the hand comes to rest, so its final velocity is zero meters per second. In addition, we have the mass of the hand. Now, we are asked in part A to calculate the magnitude of the impulse, which is symbolized by J, and that is equal to the final momentum minus the initial momentum. Let's expand those expressions for the momenta. For the final momentum, you would take the mass and multiply it by the final velocity. And then for the initial momentum, you take the mass and multiply it by the initial velocity. And this again is equal to the impulse J. We can actually factor out the mass. This gives us the final velocity minus the initial velocity. Perhaps in our original diagram, we can call the final velocity VF. Now it's just a matter of plugging in the known values here for part A. Again, we know the mass is 0.7 kilograms. The final velocity is zero meters per second minus the initial. Be careful here, you're gonna be subtracting a negative 13 meters per second, so you'll end up adding that. And that allows us to pick up our calculator and punch that in, we end up getting 9.1, and this would be kilograms times meters per second. That would be the magnitude of the impulse delivered to the hand. That is the correct answer to part A. In part B, we have to calculate the average force. And we can do that by using this theorem here. This tells us that the impulse is equal to the average force multiplied by the time interval. So to solve for the average force, we would divide both sides of this equation by that time interval. We can see, therefore, that the impulse magnitude divided by the time interval is equal to the magnitude of the average force. The question gave us that time interval. We scroll back up, we can see that it's 5 milliseconds. Be a little careful here. You're going to have to multiply that by 10 to the negative 3 in order to convert that into a standard unit of seconds. So now we'll just put the impulse that we calculated in part A over that time interval. And when we punch that into our calculator, we will get 1,820. This is a force, so that unit will come out to Newtons. This is the correct answer to part B of the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it, but of course, don't feel obligated to do so.